Hey gang, I'm Melody. And I'm Anthony. Thanks for watching. It's good to be back after a very busy few days in Vegas. My feet are still hurting from all the walking around. It's unfortunate. Yeah, it's a tough life for me. I know. Look at all, all this new, wonderful stuff. <laughs> As you probably know, Anthony and I got the lowdown on a slew of new gadgets. The 3D Handycam camcorder, the 3D Vio F-Series laptop, the 3D Bloggy, the new WX CyberShot camera, and the flagship 2011 Bravia HD TV. We were hands-on before the Consumer Electronics Show even opened. Yeah, and tons of you have been watching our CES videos, doing your own research, and posting some really good questions on our YouTube channels. So our first order of business is to give you some answers. Now let's start off with something we really need to address. When we first showed you the 3D Handycam, we told you that you could not edit the 3D video shot with these devices. Well, dozens of people commented that 3D content shot with this camcorder would work on the latest version of Sony Vegas Pro editing software, and they were a little confused by our statements. Now, it's true that the latest Sony Vegas Pro software supports a variety of 3D formats. The real detail comes from the codec the TD10 supports. It's got two side-by-side -side cameras that capture AVC HD, and it's really about how those two AVC HD files are wrapped as a 3D video, which is still getting figured out. Editing software manufacturers are awaiting the patch for this new codec when it's announced. Sony Vegas software is prime for editing 3D movies from this camera, but it still needs the patch before it will officially work. Likely the same case for other 3D editing software. But the 3D camcorder is available starting in April, and though there's no fixed date for the codec and patch, we expect to hear that soon, and it will certainly be before the product is available, so don't worry. Now let's get into some of the other questions we got about the 3D Handycam. So Top Dog in UK asks, I wonder what it shoots to. SD cards, SDHC cards, internal memory, uh, any max capacity, image stabilization, night shot lux rating, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, iFi, remote controller, photo snap function for 2D and 3D, sound quality, tripod, light holder. Here are all the answers I've got. Uh, 64 gigs internal flash memory and a card slot for SD, SDHC, SDXC, and Memory Stick Pro Duo Media. But it's important to use a fast card whenever shooting HD video, no matter what format you're using. Uh, yes, each G Series lens is equipped with optical steady shot image stabilization with active mode, which is especially important when shooting 3D video because you've got two different cameras to worry about. Uh, we saw a spec of 11 lux for standard, 3 lux for low lux. No Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, or iFi, because sending 3D video over wireless could be kind of a challenge because there's so much data involved. Yeah. Uh, it has an AV remote, which usually means remote availability, and there is 2D still image at seven megapixels, but no 3D still image capture. Uh, we weren't sure what specifics you were looking for about sound quality, but it's got built-in 5.1. And lastly, there is a standard tripod socket and a built-in intelligent shoe for Sony intelligent shoe accessories. Uh, lastly, kbatman99 says, does anybody know if the camera has an AVR connector to be controlled by a LANK controller? Uh, in short, it does have an AV remote, but no LANK controller. Oh yeah, and we got some questions about the spacing between the two lenses. We don't have an exact figure, but it's about an inch. There you have it. Now here are a couple questions we got about the 3D bloggy. Too Cool For You asks, so if I bought a 3D TV, I can't play back my 3D videos on it? Wow, Sony, you really screwed up. Wow, I don't want any trouble, buddy. I'm sorry, let me clear it up for you. <laughs> we heard this a lot and there was a lot of confusion around. So first of all, this is our fault. Again, because we taped so early, we were still getting a lot of information. And also, this is how the demos on the CES show floor actually worked, using those red and blue anaglyph glasses. So let's set the record straight. For the 3D content captured on the new 3D Bloggy, as long as you have a 3D TV that supports a side-by-side -side format, then you can change the setting to side-by-side -side and view 3D content using whatever glasses that your 3D TVs require. In the case of Sony's 3D TVs, they support side-by-side -side format, so you just change your settings to this and you can watch the bloggy's 3D content using those active shutter glasses you have. Now what's kind of nice about having the red and blue anaglyph glasses is that people can create content for people they don't even know and just freely post it across the internet which allows people who own different kinds of 3D gadgets or no 3D gadgets at all uh, to view the content. So totally. That, that's pretty nice. Yeah YouTube's got a bunch of red and blue 3D stuff. Exactly. Julio Cesar 24 wrote in to say so you need 3D glasses to view the preview screen of the 3D camera 
Man, there's something wrong with Sony. Actually, if by the preview screen you mean the built-in LCD, no glasses are required. The built-in LCD is auto stereoscopic, which means it displays in 3D without the need for glasses. It looked really cool in person yeah, too. I was really nice. impressed with it. Uh, all right, let's get to some questions about the Bravia XBR HX929. Uh, Nanica wants to know, can I transform 2D video to 3D video with the push of a button? The answer is yes. This has been a feature since the 2010 3D models were launched. Uh, the latest Bravia TVs work the same way. Again though, converting 2D to 3D content is kind of like a sugar substitute. Like it's good, but it's not as good as native 3D content. Uh, 23 Grandmaster K wants to know, is it coming out in March or May? Because I've heard both. 46 and 55 inch XBR should be available in the March, April time frame with the 65 inch coming in the summer. But I know where you heard May. A few other Bravia models announced at CES mentioned a May time frame. Those would be the HX820, NX720, and the HX729. And apparently there's been some misunderstanding about the price. Zhao Bao 68 wrote in to say that the 55 inch is going to go for $9,999 and 99 cents. And the remote app will be available for 99.99. That is pretty expensive. Uh, definitely not true. <laughs> Pricing will be in line with the current XBR line, which is way less than 10K, and the apps are going to be available for free. Moving on now to the 3D Vio F-Series laptop. Okay, Showdown at Sundown wants to know, what's the price gonna be on this? I'm looking to get a new laptop soon. The pre-built model will start at Sony Style for about $17.99, and they'll also have a custom-built model available, which is really nice. And that leads us to our next question from Captainman 2.0, who says, I'm sorry, but why would I pay over $1,000 for a dang laptop when I bought mine with the same features minus the 3D for $400? bucks. Well, Anthony did a great feature on this a while ago in his laptop buyer's guide. There's usually a massive difference between a $400 laptop and a high-end model that's in the $1,000 plus range. In the case of the 3D Vio F, not only would the CPU differ immensely uh, with the quad-core CPU, but there's also the hard drive speed, the screen quality, the chassis quality, enhanced audio, a Blu-ray drive, and the list just, just goes on and on. So there's a lot of stuff in there. And at a price difference that large, there's a ton of extra features in this F versus other models offered at $400. But it doesn't mean don't get a $400 laptop. You just have to ask yourself, how long will I have it? Uh, what do I need it for? And that'll help a lot in determining what laptop is right for you. Okay, Dragon2534 asks, won't color ruin the 3D effect? I'm not an expert, but I'm thinking any color other than black would distract the user's eye from the 3D effect. Great question, but color would not ruin the effect, although black is the least distracting. Sony chose the premium black color for the launch of this model because they felt it exemplified the premium experience of the new F-Series the best. All right, here's a question someone posted on Engadget. Is that all black glass like the iPhone 4 on that laptop? Actually, no, the glossy black material on the chassis is not glass, but a painted surface with a glossy finish applied. So last but not least, let's get to the WX9 Cybershot camera. Overall, the price of the WX9 received a great reception from all of you out there. And the biggest question we got was, when can I pre-order this? Uh, the great news is that you can actually pre-order this right now on sonystyle.com for about 220 bucks. You can get it in uh, red, black, or silver. So there you have it. As more CES gear becomes available at Sony Style, you'll hear about it here, so keep watching.